What is exactly what does it exactly mean to be primal for you? Good question. Uh, I think in this context, uh, it can just be uh, acting, uh, acting in a natural sense, uh, without uh, without worry of uh, judgment, because our egos in day to day uh, in reality are so fragile that judgment from others is perceived as a negative thing. Why aren't we primal on our daily life? Uh, it's not time efficient. <laughs> uh, can we break uh, being primal into into aspects? Uh, can we break it? For example, the first thing that comes into my mind naturally is uh, if we say that people go to raves to be primal, is the sex sexual aspect or the sex uh, the aspect of uh, getting to know uh, somebody. You know, like the sexual interaction on the on a more primal way is probably happening in a rave more than on the street or in the or on the space. street. I love on the street is your first go to. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, on our daily life, <laughs> hopefully not happening on the street. But uh, you know, what? Um, so how would you describe being primal sexually at a party at a at a rave? I don't think it's about being primal sexually. Um, I think that it's being open to that. If that's what, if that's what being primal i.e authentic acting without judgment might mean in this situation uh, if you're meeting another person who's primarily charged and i just see reproduction is super primal yeah and yeah, we yeah, always yeah. if we are not already in a in a relationship and we're going to a, to a rave then i would guess that men as women would have a very primal feeling of mating and dance is also a part of it. Yeah, and and I think also like it can be a mating ritual, dancing, you mm -hmm. know, and um, uh, and 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 it's 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 so much fun, you know, uh, yeah. and it's something you don't have the opportunity to do in a day to day life. So you're more likely by nature, um, one would hope, uh, to grab that opportunity and enjoy it, you know. And I think further to that primal aspect of dance, you know, like if you're at the right party. Uh, as we would call it, you yeah. know, uh, you can have a group tribal experience, you know, and this is this can be more powerful than this the would be the yeah this would be another aspect, a better aspect yeah, yeah, than yeah, sex. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Gans canal, bro. You can always take the words out of my mouth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So that's yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And actually, this is why, like, you know, um, for me, like, you know, uh, sex at a party is 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 never. Um, uh, um, never guaranteed it's never it's never searched for it's never really not never often obviously not written off either but yeah. it's not a goal no. you know it's yeah. a potential not scenario. necessarily a goal yeah, you don't exactly. go with that thought you know that you're open for it and other people are open for it and what happens happens but no expectation and yeah and certainly no um uh desire uh, by default this is exactly what makes i think dance as an aspect a much more important uh factor for a rave uh, because when you go to a rave, you do always want to have a good dance. Uh, your expectations in terms of dancing at a, at a rave are way higher than sexual expectations or mating expectations, I would say. I think, and this is where um, you know, more sex-focused parties can be. I mean, if if uh, I mean, because the way we're describing it is almost like like you should be wanting to dance over over sex that's not necessarily the case i mean it is for me and i think it, it like it is for a lot of people that go to larger techno parties with good or, or smaller techno parties with with uh, with good music but there are clubs that are popular that are say Kit Kat or certain fetish parties where music is not the focus because dancing is not the focus. The focus is sexual activity, sexual exploration, etc. Yeah. Rather than that being a potential option. It's, like it's more like a nice bar where people can dance and have background music for their mating process. I mean, it's not just a bar, you know, like, yeah, like there, there will be, there will be dance for doesn't want to be I a mean, because we went to Kit Kat on a Thursday and the music was dope. What? I've never been to Kit Kat in my life. Just I was with it. some other Moses looking yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love, love it. Yeah. Because that, that, that was the. Yeah. I I'm really that. happy with that one. Me, That's that the fucking intro. I don't was, fucking care. Yeah. So now I'm recording and you can go with it, okay? Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just for OCD purposes. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. <laughs> and uh, a bit closer to the mic. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I need to. Uh, yeah. Hi and welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> are we li- we live now? Yeah. Yeah. We're live now. <laughs> um, are we going live on TikTok right now? No, no, we didn't do that that time. Fuck that shit, right? Were there many many viewers last no. time? No, and I think uh, you I know. Think we need to have, to have a studio for it. You know? and then like maybe, and maybe this information is also just too precious for TikTok. Right? Yeah, well, that's that's fine by me. I don't even use TikTok. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, was was the first time you found out about TikTok uh, like through uh, just filming a TikTok or with us or uh, or you or you, um, or you know about it before? Should we intro the podcast first? <laughs> <laughs> No, this is all part of it. It's a conversation. For me, it's a part of it. Welcome, welcome to uh, Tough Love Two. Um, and because it's the second episode, we decided to do two intros. I'm just kidding. No, well, well I mean, I mean, perfect. this is the, this is the formal intro, but yeah, there was yeah. an informal, one can say, spontane yeah. intro yeah, prior, exactly. which is what you've just seen or yeah. are about to see, depending on how it's edited. Yeah. And know? now we have to do like uh, a kind of uh, in the last episode of. Uh, okay you do that love. you do that i, did, do I, that. I, did, I uh, didn't do a synopsis no yet. i just uh, i wanted to say that was uh, really fun uh and uh, unex- unexpected higher than the expectation uh and it was even uh, like more usual. fun to, yeah, like usual. <laughs> <laughs> it, w- it was even more fun to rewatch it and uh, to see some nice moments so i hope everybody uh, will uh everybody some people will find it interesting and uh, and helpful or just entertaining for you know just uh, to sit and listen if you have that uh, time um and i'm really happy that we meet again <laughs> and uh kind of deepen some stuff jump to other stuff and uh just uh basically i don't think we really have to have uh, uh a storyline because it's it's built up uh, upon many small stories of experience the the stuff where we're talking about and we can always uh, open and close tabs people <laughs> will have to forgive our nice. adhd you know so um and who knows maybe because right now the first one's about to be aired i guess in some yeah, weeks very so, soon, very soon. so we, we haven't had any feedback yet so yeah we would love to hear feedback questions uh, suggestions for topics yeah, uh questions yeah. yeah yeah anything anything it's called uh, tough love because it's transparent or trying to be transparent and w- with every question you ask we will try to give uh, you our most uh, sincere uh, uh legit answer you know and maybe it give. will help us grow as well so think <laughs> think of us too <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly we're always growing um <laughs> yeah, so Techno Team uh, came to the world with this idea of Techno Basics. And uh, a lot of people make their own interpretation of it. There are super different interpretations of that uh, whole uh, uh, subject or subgenre that we kind of, I don't know, I don't know if we created it, but it's a, it's a format. It's a, it's a format. And um, we wanted to maybe continue with. Uh, a reference to that format into our t- uh, talks and to go from techno basics as uh, techno dance basics to to maybe rave basics or rave behavior basics not to tell people how to d- not not to tell them how to behave not necessarily to tell them how to behave but maybe to help those who haven't been part of that world to to understand the codex of the of 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 and, and would you say how not to behave as well of course yes of course and i think in every society that seeks for safety and seeks for for uh, for calmness of mind and and i think every society like that needs rules i'm i'm down for that and even the even those <laughs> and, and germany we're in germany too yeah so. i mean <laughs> even if you're going against the rules you will probably have your own rules so uh, we can talk about those rules or uh, different uh, visions of, of, of codexes born from the freedom of the rave. And um, I wanted to start as simple as it gets and just imagine uh, imagine that, y- that you're like uh, just interested in the night scene and the clubbing scene and the scene of electronic music, but you've never been there. Yeah. You've heard it for the first time. Maybe take yourself back to like four, five, six, seven, year, eight years ago when you started raving yourself. And uh, but with the experience that you have today, with the knowledge that you have today, Oof. how 
how would you pick a party? How would you pick how to, where to go to on a weekend in Berlin? Classic. A difficult question with the knowledge I have now, because the, the knowledge I have now, I've accumulated through partying. So these are two juxtaposing Your ideas. recommendation <laughs> to, to, all, to young Robbie. Your recommendation. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I mean, so basically, like, if I came as a Berlin virgin, um, have, I, have I still got the experience from partying I do in the UK or no partying at all? I would uh, imagine having no par no experience at all in Berlin parties. I'm, I'm okay, sure that okay. there's a lot of uh, very nice uh, scene all, scenes all over the world, but you're mm -hmm. not a raver from from Britain, let's say. You're uh, you're Re a regular, regular, regular guy, white collar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, just uh, uh, I would say middle class. Uh, uh, coming for the first time to this uh, open -minded, infamous open -minded, mecca of techno, uh, open still open-minded, yeah. but never been into to a proper techno party, a sex positive mm -hmm. party, or mm -hmm. or something that is not a pop party. Your experience till now was like m big mainstream clubs and uh, where they serve big bottles and have mm -hmm. tables. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. was your experience, and you come <laughs> and you come to the techno world because you're interested in the music. You 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 maybe you've mm. decided that that the music in the mainstream clubs is just the same things you hear in the radio mm -hmm. and you want to experience something more more deep and you heard a lot and you saw because social media is bombed with different uh and techno germany uh, and all this yeah yeah no? there's a lot of content from just if you take the content from festival like burning man content uh, on the one side till the hardcore kind of ravey content that we sometimes see there's a lot of uh, information going on also for people that don't know about the techno scene I think some ravers from around the world uh, or beginner ravers have already have have gotten a picture about how Berlin looks uh, like on, in the club from the inside. But you have never been there. You've seen something on social media. You're interested. How do you pick a party? So you said like it was about the, it was about the music that I was interested. So I mean, I mean, my first bit of advice to uh, someone who hasn't been to an electronic music party before, whether it I mean, we, okay, so we're talking about techno in this case, yeah. is you need to be aware that the techno is a vast spectrum of music. What you see on social media is generally big festivals, very, very um, palatable for wide audiences because it's not going in any particular artistic direction. Within techno, you will have, you know, you will have a anything from like verging on house music, like tech house through to uh, extreme industrial um aggressive uh, aggressive techno um and you you may you may not be ready for what you're experiencing because of the, each whatever you choose will, will likely have some kind of small subculture or community or group based around that who are regulars there and maybe um maybe this affects how welcome you feel in the party also um and how much you, how much you can enjoy it so really consider what you want from the party actually um if you uh if you if there are particular artists you want to see which which is implied by um wanting to go for the music um would you recommend starting listening to the music uh, before uh, you make your first club visit yes. so if people hear techno and never been there they should really first like explore the music see how and if they like it they go there how uh, I have to come back to that question. How would you pick a club in Berlin today? So there's, there's the classic like resident advisor actually, and so on. Yeah, but I, I, I like. Well, I actually, um, most uh, most medium to large parties uh, have resident advisor part pages now. Um, I mean, we did for drift. You know, you do. Yeah. You know, it's 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 like it's, it's commonplace uh, almost. Yeah not not far it's from a billboard it's a very yeah. very nice uh, so billboard. so resident advisor will give you a decent overview of what's happening in the city on that night so if you do have been listening to artists and you can say actually i would like to see this artist um then yeah pro probably you're going to have a good time if you enjoy if you're going for the music because then at least you want to there's something there for you to appreciate rather than if you're going uh, you know, because if you, if you if you go to like I, I love I love uh, I love uh, heavy techno sounds as well. I love, I love uh, hardcore. I love I was rave more uh, the other week and had an incredible time. But this music, if you are new to the genre and are biting off more than you can chew, let's say, is going to be a, a shock to the system if your experience in parties up until that point has been as you as you said like um, commercial pop table service is 
it's like night and day. Yeah. So your preconceptions are going to be so inaccurate that you might love it, you might hate it, but it, but it could it could scare you away from something mm -hmm. that you could enjoy if you were uh, able to pick a party better suited for what you're looking for, for example. Um, then maybe more specific, uh, which club would you recommend for uh, somebody like that coming to Berlin and receiving the ni uh, a nice welcome to the city with still being true to the music and uh, kind of also to the raving experience? <coughs> That's hard to say because, like, it's hard to say because you said club rather than party. Yeah. And for me, um, like... Pre-COVID, um, pre I, I had a different a, a different perception, and like pre-COVID, I would have said Grease Mula, no, no way, no, no, no questions, you know, mm hundred -hmm. percent. Now I can't say that. At I, some point of time, I would have agreed. Okay, good, good. We understand each other. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like after COVID, like the, the there was a shift uh, in in. Uh, Let's say, let's say, the, like the the um, profiles of clubs. You know, when it became very quickly apparent that the most pro the clubs with the most promise at that time were the ones that had a decent outdoor space, so they could host outdoor parties. You yeah. know, and so all of a sudden, Suicide Club is a good spot for parties. All of a sudden, Anomaly was used a lot. I, I don't say good spot because I whilst I love Anomaly, uh, I haven't had many good parties there. I do not rate the outdoor sound system and this. Uh, mm. I never went to a good open air there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I haven't been. I have never been to an open air there. We were we were supposed to do an, uh, a kind of a mixed open air there, but uh, it, uh, there were some uh, yeah uh, issues for that. So I never seen uh, one in the normal. Yeah, I mean it's it's like no matter how good the music and crowd is at a party, uh, if the music is too quiet. Then you can yeah, there, there is a restriction in Berlin about music outside, which I don't really understand. Um, we have uh, we saw the same uh, working with Oxy. We love the garden, but uh, it's very restricted in, in terms of sound. You can only play from 12, like midday, till 10 p.m. And mm. even that is also restricted. And the city comes and like puts a, a, a meter on your s sound system to block you. It's like super strict with music outside in Berlin. I mean, yeah, like I, I kind of have got accustomed to these like slightly shorter club opening hours, you know, like with, I mean, it used to be the norm that parties would go on for 24 hours. Yeah. You know? And then it's like the open air, open airs was like till 10 p.m. or midnight. Yeah. Actually, actually, I went to um, an, uh, a great party at Oxy for open air in July 21, uh, Floorgasm. Mm. Really, really good. And I, like, I didn't feel that the sound system was, was um, nice. It was enough. It was yeah, enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but we're uh, gonna try it out for it the first time now. It, it did close at 10 p.m. and I guess that was when he's uh, mm -hmm. uh, kicking. But um, anyway, like, yeah, we di we digress. <laughs> like, uh, uh, yeah, no, no. It was t talking about um, uh, clubs during the COVID period um, being more successful because they had open air space. Um, and actually, actually, um, I think some of the best open air parties I went to uh, in this period were at. The Griesmüller new spot, which at the time was still called Griesmüller, Revier Sudos now. That open air space was, was great and went to some awesome parties there in autumn um, 2020. Um, but yeah, since then, um, since the clubs reopened, um, I don't feel there's any obvious, like, mm, Eden, Eden and have been, been good and consistent with parties, actually. Um, what should we do, do, do? They had some good open air parties. They had some, they got some. Um, mm, How should I say heat from the police because of that? But uh, the open air parties were. Also I guess. Nice. I guess. I guess they um, bought the chalet space as well, and it's now. Uh, ah yes. Uh, uh, Eve it was spelled with the same, uh, the same character. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Chalet is a is a pretty old place uh, with a uh, with a history, as I know. Uh, so uh, it's a nice expansion for them, I would say, for mm -hmm. Eden. I mean, anyway. Yeah. Your question, Ben. <laughs> yeah, so there are some spots in Berlin that uh, could be could be like um, a good welcoming uh, ceremony for somebody that haven't been a part of it uh, and really is interested. Uh, I, th I, th I actually think that Aiden is one of them. I, I yeah, I was about to say like I think it's a nice size for a first Berlin party. Yeah. I I also there's a club I've never been to but I've heard um, nice things in it just being like a nice diverse welcoming space for a lot of diverse parties also which is a uh, Menschmeier opposite anomaly. Our friends are doing a party there on the fourth of February. It's a big place but uh, wait wait no no hard place huh? 
No, exactly. Yeah, 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 she mentioned. Yeah, yeah, Kvetch, Kvetch. Hi to Kvetch. Noah, our resident, is uh, also one of their founders, and uh, they're playing uh, this uh, pretty big event in the weekend of C- the CTM Festival in Berlin. Uh, the CTM Festival takes also part in Berkheim. I thought that was this weekend. Next weekend, is it? The fourth, the fourth, fourth oh, of I, February. I thought, I thought CTM was this weekend coming. No, I think I, yeah, it's the next one. It's the next one, and uh, they have a lot of events. I I didn't know that festival before that year, and uh, I found out that they're yeah they're pretty big and uh, doing super diverse stuff, and um, yeah, Menschmeier. Uh, they have like a strong agenda in terms of uh, raves. They try to keep the prices uh, the prices low and fair for everybody. So they're kind of they have a social agenda, which I sometimes like. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think that uh, that uh, that uh, this uh, scene could be, or this uh, the, the the clubbing business could be more. Um, how do you say nachhaltig, man? Sustainable. More sustainable. Sorry, I forget that word. Uh, it could be more sustainable if the if the economic system of it would be more profitable, more not more poppy profitable, but more uh, um, calculated. You know, sometimes they just want to, they want to keep that old social, social uh, message and it makes it very hard for this, for this uh, uh, microcosmos to develop, you know, we, we, we can preserve the culture, I think we can preserve the culture without uh, gentrifying it, even if everything around it is still getting gentrified. Uh, I, oh, like, uh, that's, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard to believe. You know, I want to believe that. And I think there's always hope, especially in Berlin. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a fucking uphill struggle. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The question then was, what would I recommend? And I feel like that those, those are the only two obvious, well, I say obvious, I'm, like I've probably been there. Sounds very nice. Well, nice so, pick. so that's what you would recommend. And I would recommend Eden. And we, could, we would each give a recommendation. How about yeah, that? It used to be like <laughs> Sisyphus for me, but we talked about Sisyphus last time. Um, Maybe it's a good welcoming club for some for some uh, tourists getting interested uh, or people getting interested in in uh, Berlin's night scene. But um, I I don't think it fully represents the the raving experience anymore. Um, what what doesn't uh, uh, Sisyphus. Sisyphus? Yeah, I don't. Think I, I I haven't been in yeah. five years. Yeah, I've been before the pandemic a lot of times. After the pandemic, a couple of times, and the space is still there. The the nice ambience but is still what, what, there. What's but mi- what's missing? Uh, from Sissy Force for you uh, to give you that raver experience, as you say. Um, I'm sorry to say that, but the complete feeling of safety, and uh, in some in some corners of the club, and um, mm, also sorry to say that, but <laughs> it's it, we we do call ourselves tough love. Uh, I think it's the vibe that begins sometimes from the door. Sometimes the door is super nice, and sometimes the door is very uh judgy and very um i don't know probably they have to deal with masses of people the the club is really on uh, on social media on like million wise of 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 recommendations where to go to in berlin they have a huge line every week and so i i guess they they have learned to give their own tough love but uh the vibe that i get sometimes from the door into the spaces and then you meet the different people inside I had some beautiful experiment experiences and I had some not so nice experiences. So that's why I, w- I'm pretty experienced already. How you know? would you, how would you compare this experience to, uh, in Bergheim? Both, both on the door and, uh, and feeling safe in the club. You dropped the B bomb. I'm not, I'm well, you dropped, you, you dropped, you dropped the bomb in its own right, considering the audience, you know? Okay. It's a uh, fair. Okay. <laughs> you know, like a, <laughs> we're going. Well, I, in mean, I mean, <laughs> in today's battle of clubs, it's Bergheim against Sisyphus. Yeah. I mean, I mean, well, for me, there's a clear winner, you know. But 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 uh, but I I is also there a competitor? Well, is there a winner? I, it's like it's like putting Muhammad Ali with my grandmother. I mean, okay, we we don't. <laughs> okay, ring. okay. Firstly, firstly, why? <laughs> I mean, I mean, look, look. I wasn't saying to compare. I was like shifting the focus because for me, like, I mean, I have a Bergheim tattoo for fuck's sake, you know. Like, I love. I, I, I have had some incredible times here, but okay. now I, I barely go. I think I can, I can. Um... <laughs> and it's not, and it's not because uh, now you can barely go. No, can I mean, I mean, I could, but it doesn't give me what I want anymore. He's keeping uh, dropping those B bombs. Well, I mean, 
I like I, it. I, I, went, it. I went twice last year and had a great time both times. Yes. But for me to go Bergheim twice a year is not a lot compared to... It's not a lot. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. And um, I, I, yeah, I, I, I um, whilst I had a great time, those two times I went last year, amazing time, actually. Yeah, well picked. Well, yes, but neither was close to what I was having in... In smaller spaces. No, I mean, well, now, yes, because of the spaces that I am choosing, yes, but but that's that's another topic. Yeah. But, but actually, on the topic of Bergheim, aside from my other circumstances, like... For me, I never, I never got the same magic back that I was feeling from before COVID. Mm -hmm. And strong statement. For for me, for me, is it, it, it's uh, like I've I've had incredible times there. It's still better than you know men, much of what I could experience in other Berlin parties because of the the this this element that it has. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I didn't feel compelled to. I felt like chasing a high that I knew I wasn't going to get as much you know let's define it uh, maybe it's also even good for the people maybe watching it and not knowing exactly what we're talking about uh, <laughs> um so let's consider Berkheim to be the uh, just the main official temple of techno mecca fair 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 because it's the only playground that uh, plays in its own league in terms of uh, solidness the stone and the metal there are the solidest in berlin also fair it's an institution it's legendary and yes. um that's that, that, that's why it's it's so interesting that i'm not as excited as i was mm -hmm. um in the past you know yeah and um sometimes the, the raving experience can be really achieved uh, in a completely different uh scenario than uh, than bergen but bergen is just a very good embodiment of uh, how this culture in berlin developed um yes 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 and um i i guess i guess the watchers might wonder why you wouldn't recommend it to someone coming in uh who's wanting to experience the exactly. culture so, and, the, and the quality yeah so basically the situation is like this if somebody is coming to berlin for the first time in his life the probability that he or he and he has never been into a rave the probability that or we, she or she of or course. They. sorry <laughs> so, so sorry uh, um the probability that he will stand in line for Berkheim is probably high because uh, you, it's all over the recommendations, but the probability that we'll get in is uh, way lower. So uh, we just see, we'll take Berkheim and put it as the, as the ultimate experience, I would say, for a tourist. And, and he would probably need uh, a door to get in uh, uh, to, uh, through other clubs till he gets to that final boss um <laughs> uh, and and i like this this analogy because um when i first moved to berlin myself i was going to parties similar to the kind of vibe we might recommend to someone you know like your sissy uh Katablau, chalet yeah um ipsa um Hopatosa. i never I, uh, I never went to Hobbitosa for a party. I went there randomly for like, there was a Mary Jane festival at, mm. the, at the I Arena. was at Mary Jane festival and yeah. Hobbitosa, I think the same day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. boat got me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you cheeky Seder, you. <laughs> <laughs> My parents are from Odessa. Everybody says that the, like the people of Odessa were like uh, uh, Popeye, no, shit, I Popeyes know, I and know. hookers. I don't know your parents from Odessa. Yeah. Uh, them, I, 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 I presume this whole time Israel. Oh yeah, I was born in Israel. I was But your parents from Odessa? Yeah, they came, uh, they escaped the Soviet Union in, in 1990 and I, then I was born. My mom came with a belly, so I was practically made in Odessa. Wait, Ben. <laughs> wow. I knew. Odessa everything. That's amazing. <laughs> I was actually going to say, you need a fucking tattoo saying made in Odessa. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, like it was a sailor, uh, like a Jean-Paul Gaultier thing, you know, a little bit queer <laughs> like, shirty. On, 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 on like a, an unwrapping scroll, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to uh, Benja and Zubrik doing uh, protesting uh, t-shirts. Uh, they used to like design their own funny uh, references, uh, meme t-shirts uh, before the war, and now they do have like war references. That's nice. Uh, got it as a gift from uh, from some friends from Odessa. 
a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> no, no, whatever. <laughs> what? I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to learn this, this, yeah, this, this yeah. trivia, I, but I didn't, didn't realize that then. <laughs> so coming back, uh, again back to the comparison between this rough comparison between uh, Birkin and Sisyphus, I would say that Sisyphus is a super nice space, super nice club, but n- not the entry-level raving experience you would need if, you're, if your final boss is Birkin. Sisyphus is not the entry level. It's not. It's not the entry level right right space. Maybe to 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 understand the the game of of, of to the understand the Burgoyne game. You mean? Yeah. It has a glass ceiling that he would never break because he would never see it. It's a glass ceiling. Yeah. This will probably I, I, our I, next topic, but but uh, well, like okay, wait, wait, wait. What as in as in with the staff? Or I don't Everything, understand. Okay, so the way I see clubs, it's only my personal view. Nobody has to. Well, you agree. mean the selection, nobody, everything? Nobody right. has to agree, but uh, a fish always thinks from the head. So every club is a business, and every business has a boss or a founder or co-founders, and it's not magic. It's not some voodoo that the vibe of the staff and the vibe of many people related to the club will be very similar to the vibe of its owner because he was searching for them he found them they found the next ones like a corporate co- uh, construction okay I, I understand and I totally agree I just didn't realize that was the case because I never go you know uh, but 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 that this is this is I, I don't think they're the, uh, basically the same uh, the toxic masculine person personas like in other mainstream and and, and and pop club I think they are way more open-minded I think they are more hippies I think they are more uh, happy uh, kind of uh, yeah they're, they're like uh, happy hippies with uh, with the te- tech <laughs> happy hippies with a tech tech house touch they this is okay okay yeah, yeah sorry for being so harsh but uh, no no i was gonna say harsh i gonna say it's extremely specific yeah <laughs> when i found this club for the first time i saw three floors one of them presented techno the other one presented deep uh, melodic house and tech house and the other presented the garden presented the uh, house like house disco um and just at some Way later point of time, um, I heard almost the same vibe of music on th- on th- all three of them. And on one corner of the club, I didn't feel safe. And on, th- on the other corner of the club, or most of it, I felt like walking through a nice, uh, hippie, happy party. Everybody smiling and the music was n- not of the level that I imagined when I first entered there. You know, I uh, it, the experience got a little bit... It's like, it's like starting a new video game. And just picking the really the easiest level there is, but only except for the easy level, you're like playing solitaire right now. It's that for that. There was no simulation for me, like you know. This is what what I would too too much. You, you've lost me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I think that Sisyphus is a nice club. I don't think that people coming. Uh, if we have to give like concrete recommendations for for people entering Berlin, we would recommend probably Aiden, Menschmaya, maybe maybe also normally at some of the the parties. Uh, I mean, but but also th- like like don't forget there there are uh, it, it depends on where this person's come from, and if someone really has come from, you know, one of these like. Uh, yeah, like uh, commercial mainstream clubs, mm-hmm. um, then maybe an easier route in is going to be, and I don't mean to pa- be patronizing to either the, either the entry-level people or the club, but Watergate, something like this. You yeah, know? Yeah. I know Watergate is recently throwing more We have advanced, seen some very interesting yeah. techno parties, exactly, let's say. Exactly. Um, but uh, Watergate was like maybe the third club I went to in Berlin. I saw like Marco Carola or something. You know, Our so, entry something was I went, also... Is, yeah, but it's like... You know, for 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 uh, an entry level party, just to get a sense of because e- even this even this uh, vibe, which I wouldn't go to now, I wouldn't enjoy now. Yeah, um, it still is a lot more advanced. Funny that I didn't mention uh, Watergate. It was. It was uh, yeah. was our start. We started at Watergate, and then we started going to Sisyphus, and then we yeah. started going to Griezmann, and then we started going to the rest of the of the clubs. That was like our. But also Catablau, Catablau maybe. Catablau is Catablau. also very nice, but the audience is just I think a little bit older. Uh, they're like um, we have to come to Sisyphus again. They're like uh, yeah, a but bit the, 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 this person, co- this person coming to Berlin might be a little bit older. You never know. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't talk about age. Katabla <laughs> will be amazing for a person that already has been on Ibiza and, Mik- and Mykonos because it will be probably more Berlinish, still very similar music, very nice uh, uh, banana vibes. You know, like without with no with no. Uh, no aggressive. Banana vibes is a reference to the previous episode, folks. Look it up. Yeah, yeah. Look it up. Bananas. 
I, I mean very specific bananas right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to... <laughs> so maybe it's some later You're point so time. specific with your bananas, Ben. <laughs> so specific. If this podcast gets viral, I think we will be in the position to open up m- more freely about bananas. Uh, yes. Or yes. Also, please reference the first podcast because there's... <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Let's uh, let's start maybe uh, concentrating. I mean, we, we, yeah, we're, we're, half, we're halfway story. through. We're yeah, halfway yeah. through. I'm so, it, how's it how's it going so far? Um, what should I expect? Let's pick Watergate now as a club. I think you were there a couple of times, or, or? Uh, I was there. I was there once. I was there once. Once. Okay. Once. Yeah. Um, you, at Aidens, you were you were. Way more times. Uh, they didn't, uh, a few, yeah, been, quite a few times. You've been in, in Aiden. Uh, I was also there twice before it was Aiden when it was uh, Berg Schnabel and uh, next to Birgit and Beer. It's the same same spot oh. and um, very similar layout, almost identical actually. Um, but both times I went to there before it was Aiden, I had a shit time. And it was the only club where I had a shit time in Berlin because it just. Well, I mean, actually, once once I went at the opening and there was like three people there, and it was it was uh, this is obviously another another learning thing, you know. If you're coming from elsewhere to Berlin to party, um, parties start later than other places, you know, or, or start at the same time but go on a lot later. So you don't need to rush to get there like you would in the UK for midnight. So you uh-huh. have some time. If you get there at midnight, it won't be that busy normally. Um, but what should I expect? Uh, if I'm coming to Aiden and you're standing at the door, what should I expect? I'm visiting. I heard about the party tonight. I'm interested in. I never. I I heard maybe one or two of the artists performing. Maybe not. Wait, wait, wait. Just to clarify, so I've I'm been to Resident Advisor. I see that there's a nice I, I, party. Is this going for on. drift? Is this for drift? Let's take drift as an example. Okay. I mean, so th- this is, this is an extreme example. Um, is it? Um, no, but it's a strong example. Okay, so let's uh, say no, I, I, you're I, I, doing sorry. the door. You, yeah. Rob is doing the door, but it's not drift. It's not drift. It's a. Can, it's can, a, can you? Can you? Can you is, is it a, a quantifiable party that I've done? I've done selection for before. Like how? How was the party from Suicide called that you? I am. I am. Yeah. How is the music at AM, for example? How is it? Yeah. Um, underground Berlin techno. Um, okay. Mix of mix of. Uh, uh, local artists and some bigger names visiting. High maybe. BPMs. Uh, one fifty, give or take. Okay, youngish. 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 Yeah, the I crowd, would say the yeah, crowd. Yeah, yeah. one fifty um, sounds youngish. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, you you have got you have got um, definitely a handful of teenagers who've come of age for partying, but are not, let's say. So, so just to, br- to briefly open that topic, like, yeah. I think there's a large demographic of youngish people who started partying when it was peak COVID and the clubs weren't open in the, in the normal way. Mm-hmm. And now, part, now the clubs are open normally. There's a large demographic of people that didn't really experience Berlin parties enough Pre-pandemic. as long with enough people and being enough situations to really understand what a respectful... Um, so it turns out that a lot of ravers right now are newcomers. Um, in I mean, terms of understanding, I've been, I've been I've been I've been partying in Berlin for five years, and definitely since the clubs have opened, there's a there's a new a, a new group of people. I, I'm friends with many of them, you know, yeah. um, but there are also many that I, I I don't interact with because I I, I go to parties that don't um, contain them, you know, okay. because I, I won't say enjoy the um, the energy. Your li- your. Uh, at the door right now, at, at an Aiden, at a an Aiden party, um, and this is a party f- uh, with a uh, with good music, but open to a broader crowd. And uh, you're at the door. What should I expect uh, when I uh, when I face you? Um, in terms of what, uh, in, in terms of what, what shouldn't what I, I worry about? Because a lot of people just worry. You know, what shouldn't I worry about? Should I worry about something going going to a door of a techno club? Depends how badly you want to get in. I would actually. Do you know I really you, want do, to experience. Do, do, you know, do you know what you shouldn't worry about? You shouldn't worry about not getting in, because even Thank you. like <laughs> because because even if you don't get in, um, maybe it's because you're worrying about it 
and that nervous energy makes you look like you don't belong there. Yeah. Because it is your first time. Yeah. Or or because yeah, so so Should I worry about how I look? If I'm on the door, you it would have to be it would have to be a very extreme uh example of a red flag for me to think mm. um this is a case that I need to question thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, if you're wearing a three-piece suit and loafers, nothing wrong with that. Maybe you look very sexy and stylish. And maybe you're the raving gentleman. You know, maybe, maybe, but I need to, I need to find that out. Yeah. I need to find that Depends out because, on the suit. because maybe, maybe you're in the wrong place and you think this is your friend's party and you get in by by accident and and uh, you're super uncomfortable by this situation. So it's also for your benefit. Give me the ultimate question to a person like that coming to you with a three <laughs> three part suit and loafers to an Asian hey, party. Hey, it could and he's be, like, it, man, it, it I'm. Could be, uh, I want to get in. It could be. It could be. Why are you here? I want to dance. You want to dance? Yeah, I want to dance. Do you know what I do then, Ben? I'd be like, show me then. And I dance. I, I move my hips like this. Like, show me. Dance with me. Come on. <laughs> show me. Show, show like dance with you. You're not fucking getting in. You yeah. know. <laughs> and then, and then at you that would point, him, you would make him point, dance. That, no, <laughs> I, 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 I'd offer. You invite. You invite. I'd invite him. Okay, I'd so you'll him. question his uh, <laughs> queerness. Nice, I like it. Or, or, his, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Or his intent also. Yeah. But, but it's like then he has the opportunity or the, the situation of either I'm massively intimidated by this this um, confrontation of sorts of being put on the spot mm. and it makes me awkward and I'm like, oh no no no. Yeah. Or Oh wow, this is cool, you know. Yeah, and and that I love that, and and I, I love I love that I, I, I've been, I've had my preconceptions challenged because I, I I love it when people feel that way about me, you know. And it's it's nice to, uh, to make people think because mm -hmm. actually it's these situations that make us less ju less judgmental, you know. A harder question. Please. Um, <laughs> the opposite. What's the opposite? <laughs> the What's opposite of the situation that happened right now. Um, a lot of blogs uh, or bloggers try to tell you if you wear that, you're getting in. This is the way to get into backhand. This is the way to get into cups. There is probably a look, uh, a fashionable or a, a techno look that would get people into a club almost automatically if uh, they just smile. If they don't, look I mean, I mean, sometimes, sometimes smiling is a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. If you're yeah. for Bergen, maybe. Yeah. It's not that... Okay, so if a person already dresses in a way that he thinks is uh, proper, and uh, especially like for the techno world today, I think there is like, there is an understanding of a uniform. It's super sad, yeah, but it, it is like that. There is a way to put a uniform on to blend in. A lot of people think that this is the way you should. I agree with that last bit, for sure. Um to blend in, you know, and um, I think that often, not always, um, blending in, if you like, if you blend in well, uh, is is a way to trick yourself in, you know, mm. it, it, like like because like it will come to a point because and if, do you know what do you know what Ben like you trick yourself in once and you have a great fucking time the next time it's not a trick. And it's, you know, like, so, 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 so th th there has to be like, I, like, I have to get into the mode. So maybe like the wearing the, this the, new the thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first time I went to Burgoyne, mm -hmm. I knew I was going to party. I knew I was going to have a great time. I knew I was going to spread my love everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't tough at that time. It was only love. It was soft love that, at that time. It, it, it was somewhere between, you know, okay, yeah. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was getting harder. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the first time I went to Burgoyne, like, I look the part. I'm a big, muscular, bald man wearing a harness. I look the part for sure, but I was still nervous going in for the first time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know the rumors, and you, you you queue up and you get closer and closer after queuing for hours. Yeah. Funny story. Um, it was middle of August, Oscar 2018. Yeah. Um, I'm queuing and like um the girl I was with who had only been once before and was super paranoid about getting rejected. Um, uh, shout to you, Kayla, wherever you are. Um. <laughs> that wasn't throwing. Hope, you're, comment. Not I, I, hope <laughs> you're still not standing in queue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so, so it's like I was, um, uh, I was wearing, uh, wear, wear, wearing a harness, uh, but it was super sunny, middle of August, and um, was uh, like didn't have a top on on top of it. Like, so I, so I, I really wanted to be seen, like, like uh, about how much they're monitoring the queue and checking people and like seeing like who's who's uh, 
whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. Crazy, especially with I think it's a film. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's crazy, a film crazy, made by like Ray Ray Stang and yeah, Q. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, the guards are like, how many are there? Yeah. You know, and they think, oh, he saw me. He saw that I'm talking on my phone and that I yeah, cut yeah, the exactly. line. The, the He's like, oh, yeah. Exactly. Keep for, yeah. keep for four hours, my first yeah. ever time. Four hours. Yeah. Rookie. And uh, yeah, got, got in after this crazy anxiety and then had like a uh, harness shaped sunburn like all over my, uh, <laughs> all over <laughs> my chest and stomach. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, like I, I, after that, like I, ne I, was ne I, never, I was never worried queuing up again um because like it was just I, I never i never got rejected after this after this first thing you, you have this air of confidence um if you if you are there for the right reasons you don't feel the need to like smile and like or, or like or, or be, be what are the right others. reasons being primal you know being okay. primal. well i mean so so this is this is this is um and this 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 could also come back to the topic a bit about maybe why I'm not as excited about Bergen as I was um, before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this being primal uh, is about freedom. You know, and it's about being able to express yourself and to do that without feeling judged and to do it in a safe space. Um, I no longer feel Berg Bergen is a safe space. You know, um, and I I, I you dropped I, the S bomb. I mean, so this 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 this, this is not because. I've experienced threats to my personal safety, um, but I know a lot of people that have, and I know a lot of, uh, I know a lot of, lot of like things that happen in Bergheim, and I'm not <laughs> blaming. Uh, we have a, I don't know, it's not a theory. We have a, an understanding that um, nobody really planned Berg, and I think as a safe space, it was a space uh, built for a community that needed strong walls. And because of its uh, popularity and the freedom of it and the primalness of it, it became more of a wild west where everybody should keep an eye open on his own, uh, over his own shoulder and the shoulder of his friends. So it's more of a primal wild west and a good sense also. It's a playground. It's a playground. And I think we, we shouldn't forget that all of these spaces are for, uh, first and foremost playgrounds and some of them would like to define themselves as safe spaces but i think it's also a trend like a lot of things in our uh, generation some change uh, this perception to the word safer space and suggest that they try to be a safer space than other or the or our daily reality but uh, the outcome is pretty much always the same if you give primal freedom to everybody you do have a fair amount of risk because of the um yes but that's where selection is so oh, important that's exactly you know and, and this yeah. is obviously going back to what you said about me now enjoying smaller parties you know yeah. because actually um you know four four or five years ago when i was first getting deeper into the techno scene in berlin um, and of course my Bergen experience as well um don't get me wrong i never went every single week i was never one of these um, um <laughs> fanatics. you never you never uh, completely fomoed uh exactly exactly fair yeah um but also like uh the recovery period was i i can never i can never i can never do um do a burger properly because I, I i if i do it i want to close you know if, I, if possible mm. and uh, if that's the case then i'm written off for monday tuesday you it's know like running a marathon you prepare the whole year for that and then you go for it uh i, I mean i mean well some people prepare, prepare all week for it you know? <laughs> yeah some marathon goers marathon every day you know uh, i mean i i admire i like i i know i know i know people that go every week i mean some people that go every week don't go as hard as i go when i go for example i mean when i when i go i mean i'm i'm closing and i'm and i'm and i'm and i'm really really uh, uh planning the whole situation and uh, the whole weekend is dedicated to Bergheim when when I when I when I was going uh, regularly, um, but that was still like yeah I would choose maybe my favorite from a month you know, from a month's lineup you know mm -hmm. and maybe 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 twice like but I think the only time I've been to Bergheim more than once a month has been when I did the uh, you know the like I think it was the a fourteen or fifteen uh, Geburtstag. Mm. And then I did, yeah, this is 2019, um, and then I did the uh, uh, Sylvester Club Nacht, oh, yeah. which was like special uh, evenings or just, uh, uh, yeah, big events. Yeah, yeah. Big and, events. And at the time, the spectacle of what the, what the club was, the fact that I knew so many people there, um, I mean, I still do, uh, but actually now it's more people know me, which is also part of why I don't feel as free there, because me being, <laughs> me being primal, ironically, given the context, is a big energy 
if I'm being immersed in this experience and this draws attention, which normally I love. And actually like on the times I've gone to Burgoyne, I have because it's been so rare now that I'm ready to be like, hey, let's fucking go people. Mm -hmm. And I'm an anecdote, you know, which mm -hmm. I love. I, I, I mean, this is, it's, 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 it's great. Um, but also like, as I've told you, I like amongst like, so, so this experience, this like, great energy where like i'm i'm getting so much from this and I'm, I'm 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 loving performing as well as enjoying you know um like there comes this five percent of shit which comes from really toxic people mm -hmm. that use me like accidentally um as yeah a canvas for their insecurities and it's, it happened when it happens but like, it's rare and you know i always learn a new boundary from it you mm -hmm. know or, or how to deal with it but it it, it ruins my energy. And now I'm, I'm just like, ugh, I, I feel slimy now, you know? Yeah. You pro you projected your shit on me, you know? And and uh, this happened at the last Bergen I did. And I, I, was, I took a break to come back for the closing. And then, like, going That's back, where we missed each other, I think. You, you, yeah, saw, you saw exactly, me coming bro. in, you th were th going this out. Was, this, was, this was when we did the, the, the drift stream. Yeah. And uh, when, uh, when Ruslan played at... Yeah. Um, Amina in fucking uh, Elsa. Mm -hmm. Shout out to you, Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like it was. It was this night. That was last time I went to Burgoyne, actually. And yeah, um, yeah like I, I couldn't come back for the closing because I was just like having anxiety at like facing this this situation again. Mm. Um, and uh, I was just like, yeah, actually, I, I'm, <laughs> I feel safe at home. I'm just going to chill here, mm -hmm. you know, protect my energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Let's let's come back to the to the door. Uh, you say yeah, yeah, there's yeah. always even in clubs that have such a heavy door like back and you say there's still this 5% chance meaning uh, there is still maybe the 5% or maybe more percent of people that um uh, could have been uh selected or <coughs> instead of those people the, there could have been uh, a different kind of selection. So what would you consider uh the best mix of people mm. not for a particular party but what would be your guiding line or your red flags when you meet a person for the first time at the door what would be a red flag and except for like clothing as we said you ask mm -hmm. maybe some questions mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> um and i hope this isn't used to to trick me when i <laughs> I'm joking. I see. I see through your shit. Toxic yeah, people. exactly. Um, so, <laughs> no, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. Look, like, Give them like the tricky like ones it's, without the answer. It's it's interesting and it's a good question and I, I like to talk about it because like some very toxic people might say, "What gives you the right to so that you know, like yeah. what gives you the right?" And actually, um, like me me uh like the, the the development i've had emotionally uh, has enabled me to like have some kind of intuition about people you know and when i i felt really really honored when um uh, victor a future 666 asked me to do uh, the am selection because it wasn't something i'd, I'd really done i've done nightclub security when i was younger you know uh very different um i mean this is kind of pre pre-security actually yeah. in some ways so. yeah and um I, but I, th I thought actually th this is this is a nice challenge for me, you know, yeah. and uh, yeah, like actually, I love it that selection is pre security. I like it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, first exactly, uh, exactly. filter of safety. Yeah, uh, to anyone who's watching internationally, I <coughs> bless you. I've Thank you. I've never seen a f almost never seen a fight in a Berlin party uh, until last year. That's another story. Yeah, um, it's super uh, seldom. It, it like, almost doesn't happen. The UK, uh, it's it's every party I go to, regardless of genre, regardless of you know, like so yeah. it, it, it's it's noticeable, yeah. um, and that's because the crowd is selected, and uh, you know, selection is yeah, it's uh, it's a huge responsibility, um, and not everyone can do it. But actually, if you trust your intuition, and I had that affirmed that actually the, the crowd is good, and actually you know my intuition about certain people was was, was right um that i i'm i'm able to to trust my trust my gut you know yeah. and i because i've I, i'm 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 waiting for people to approach obviously i wasn't waiting for people to approach at, at Vaselka because they were already there in a huge queue <laughs> uh -huh. uh, but but uh, am for example um you know people will approach uh, uh generally like sporadically you know um it's a small smaller party after party um and um 
Oh, yeah, but, uh, so we're talking about Eden, right? This, this was the analogy. Well, that, that didn't For matter. example, you're at the door of Eden uh, and you want to ask uh, just a basic one oh, or yeah, two okay, questions. Uh, yeah. So, so um, firstly, uh, before I've even asked anything, I mean, I know that I'm going to be standing there chilling, relaxed, um, calm, um, yeah. possibly smoking a joint. And people approach and straight away, um I'll, I'll i'll look at them in the eyes and and if they look nervous and can't look me in the eye that's already an amber flag yeah because why are they nervous for just because yeah. i looked at them you know yeah i'm not scary you know not when i'm smiling <laughs> <laughs> and to most people you're not scary yeah, right? yeah. To most people well i mean and the, 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 i shouldn't be you know because I, I i i'm not scary unless i need to be you know and if i don't need to be then <laughs> Yeah. All good. Yeah, so yeah. Don't give me a reason, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, joking. Am I still no. the guy with the three uh, part suit and loafers? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You, you gave me figure eight with the hips. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Dance with me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, but if, if someone's like smiling, look me in the eyes, uh, you know, and, and, and I, I feel I feel they're like they're maybe happy to see me because I'm about to let them into this party, you know, rather than, oh, shit, like, am, am I, you know, am I, am I going to be embarrassed and rejected here? Um, and then just why are you here? What have you come for? Yeah. See what they say. You know, yeah. see what they say. Maybe they say the name of the party and they're really excited. And uh, I'm just like, I like you. I'm missing you on the dance floor. Right. You know, or, or, or maybe or maybe they're just like. Um, you know. Yeah, I think the person at the door would easily see if the person in front of him or her uh, just have memorized the two of the names of the lineup, and this is already. So, so yeah, I mean, like, uh, you can make a joke out of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not convinced. Yeah, sell me, sell me, yeah. tell me, like, tell me, what, what, what yeah. why here, why here, yeah. really? You yeah, know, come yeah. on, just, just, just tell me. Like, so, 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 I, I, I give you an example, like, because this is like. Obviously, I'm, I'm saying no to a lot of people, and I don't have to be a prick about it. A lot of people are. I'm, I, I, I want, I want to, I want to um, leave people feeling hugged when they go. You Did know? you ever answer the question, "Why didn't you let me in?" Why? Um, why didn't you let me in? You know why. <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> yeah, that's no, seriously no, like like that that's one example of like so it's so nice and uh, not at the same time <laughs> yeah, really exactly, super, exactly. super. J just like them asking that question you know what I mean and like, it's just it's just like like uh, I, I I have fun with it because it because <laughs> Ben you know what this is the best opportunity for me to practice and look, give tough love you know yeah and, and and that's why I love it because it challenges me because it helps me grow in a healthy way mm -hmm. um, and it teaches me a lot. I mean, like <laughs> doing 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 a party like uh, Oxy, where like there was um, this many people taught me actually I don't want to do parties of that size, for example. That yeah. is, so the, fair the, enough. The, the fair enough. can be circumstantial about it. Yeah. Uh, but it's like actually having a chance to play with people whilst I'm delivering tough news, you know, um, and even giving them a chance to learn. Okay, actually, so 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 another example. Um, <laughs> uh, this was from AM actually. Um, Mixed couple, two boys, two girls. Um, um, they, they were like hud huddling at the corner before coming, just like pss, 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 this, this kind of thing. So already I'm just like, what are they, what are they, what are they doing? You know? And uh, and uh, they, they come around the corner and kind of, they, there's no one else in the queue. Uh, so I just kind of, oh, wait a second. I carry my conversation, smoking my joint with the other guy. Uh -huh. just, to, just to make them you know, yeah. stand a bit. And then I came back to them and was like, so, you know, why are you here? Uh -huh. You know? <laughs> and uh there was like uh, uh and someone says dance yeah to dance to dance i was like you don't know what party this is do you and they're like they're like the algorithm yeah, yeah. says and, dance and, and and uh and there's a girl a girl at the back um it was just like like frantically looking through her phone like this and i kind of slowly uh peer through the two guys who were stood here and slide my hand over her phone screen i was like up here darling up here Tell me the name of one artist playing. Just one. Oh, is one it? DJ. That's Come really, on, you've got it. You've got really it. Tell tough me love. Come really on. tough love. Maybe you got it. One. Just one. Just one. So what, <laughs> what, about, what, what about you? And then like, what, what about you, group leader? Do you know anyone playing? Group leader. <laughs> and, and Show then, me. Take me to your leader. And then, and then uh -huh. do you know what Show I said? Do you know what I said? <laughs> I said? I said, if you were me, yeah. would you let you in? Yeah, and what did she say? They, they, they laughed and then I was just like, 
go around the corner. There's five or six more clubs around here. Oh. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like they, 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 they probably weren't even upset about it. They well, yeah, because because I made it into a, into a joke. I yeah. I, I, I could I could because I have seen some selectors. Yeah. Being like. Yeah. <laughs> That's frustrating. You've it's, mean. it's mean. It's mean. Yeah. It's mean. You know. Yeah. You know. Like yeah. you don't have to do that. You know. And and uh, like if you can leave if you can leave someone with a feeling hugged, as I said, then you even implement. I feel, I feel better about it. Yeah. I I haven't had to like. Of course, it's not always possible. And normally the reason is super toxic males, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but actually sometimes people are just idiots, you know? Yeah. I think uh, the reason uh, the underground uh, would sometimes like to stay in the underground is because it gives you the even earlier filter of, I'll call it natural selection, doesn't sound well, but I'll call it the natural selection. Why? Because I think if a space is in the underground and it's not uh, trying to, to show itself out, you have to get interested to go there at the first place. So this is the first filter. I believe that the people coming to observe the underground are already interested, and I believe in giving most of them the, this opportunity to, to be a part of it and to experience it, but uh, the second filter of idiots has to happen. Yeah, It's, it's interesting you, you, you put it like that, because when I first arrived in Berlin, you know, five years ago, I wasn't ready for the underground, you know, and and that's the reason why when I'm when Ben and I are, are, are talking about these potential first time parties in Berlin, we're not naming the parties that we go to, you know, because actually, actually, these are you need experience and a certain level of understanding of who you are, what you enjoy, how you express yourself, what your boundaries are, uh, what you consume. This is this is a whole a whole um exploration ground for someone arriving in berlin getting into the scene on any level um so i think it is is like, yeah like building blocks almost yeah yeah nice yeah and and with that tone uh optimistic hopefully for uh <laughs> newcomers <laughs> into the city uh get your uh earphones on i think and start listening to music i think that will be your uh, guiding line for clubbing yeah. and that will be probably your fastest ticket to any place because if you're interested anything enough in the music and the artist you will sooner or later be sucked into it even without wanting you know and whether we have the time running out of time people uh definitely didn't get as deep as wanted to in some topics but plenty more plenty more to come and yeah definitely welcome any feedback i think we did say that with every episode because this, yes. this one might not be out for a while <laughs> feedback is always is always uh, welcome and uh yeah hopefully we see each other or hear each other uh, soon and uh, continue from the point that we stopped at thank yeah. you bye <laughs>